Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, June 12, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of neuroscience. Researchers from France working with MIT have been studying obsessive-compulsive disorder in mice with promising results. Some may not consider OCD a very severe condition, but the repetitive behavior can get so extreme it interferes with a person's normal life. Treatments for OCD, both pharmacological and psychotherapeutic, have had varying degrees of success, with up to a third of people still showing some symptoms. Which is why these researchers created the mutant strain of mice in order to better understand the exact neural mechanism responsible for the condition. Previous study of humans with OCD identified a circuit between two brain regions, the orbitofrontal cortex and the cerebral structure at the base of the brain. This deeper brain region is related to learning, developing habits, and decision making. Removing a particular gene related to this region caused the mice to obsessively groom themselves, even so much that they caused skin lesions. Imaging from the mice's brains revealed a lack of inhibition and therefore an overexpression of specific neurons that led to the repetitive behavior. Next, they used our favorite method, optogenetics, to make those neurons react to light, allowing the researchers to inhibit their function at will and study the results. This highly targeted stimulation greatly reduced the OCD-like behavior, and it resumed when the light was removed. Whether or not this kind of treatment would be used on humans is another matter, but it does allow researchers to probe the physiology behind such conditions in more detail, hopefully leading to more effective treatments. Next is news from the world of material science. As we have mentioned on Brainstorm before, hydrogen fuel cells could be an awesome alternative to combustion engines. They'd be more efficient, produce no CO2 directly or even indirectly if the hydrogen is produced right. One of the obstacles preventing their early adoption is the price, and much of this expense comes from the cost of platinum, which is an essential catalyst. Fortunately, scientists from South Korea and the University of North Texas have been able to develop a metal-free catalyst from graphene. Before we get into the catalyst, let's do a quick rundown of a normal fuel cell. Some kind of fuel, hydrogen for example, gets an electron taken from it at the fuel cell anode. This electron goes to powering whatever the device is. The positive hydrogen ion then goes through a membrane toward the cathode where electrons are being added to oxygen in the air. The negative oxygen ions and the positive hydrogen then combine to form harmless water as waste. The efficiency of adding electrons to the oxygen, called reduction, is extremely important for overall fuel cell efficiency and is where the platinum normally comes in. These scientists had previously developed a way to turn chunky graphite into nanoscale graphene using mechanical milling, which is just shaking it in a container with steel balls. Adding various gases to the resulting graphene nanoparticles created a variety of potential catalysts. One, where some carbon atoms were replaced with iodine performed best, allowing the fuel cell to generate 33% more current than platinum, while potentially being much, much cheaper. It's even more resilient to repeated uses than the precious metal, making the next step scaling up production, further testing, and implementation. We end with an update from the world of medicine. If there's one thing pretty much everybody can agree on, it's that cancer sucks. And a leading cause of cancer death is metastasis. That's when cells from a tumor detach and wander the body, only to reattach somewhere else and become more tumors. Now, other than blood and a few other cell types, most tissues aren't designed to be very mobile, so metastasis is a pretty complex process. One good thing about metastasis is that it's a point of similarity between a variety of very different cancers, which in theory should make it easier to target and treat. Well, a team from the University of Basel have actually found the master regulator for the metastasis process. They found that a gene called SOX4 is upregulated in metastatic cancer. This gene in turn triggers a bunch of other genes, some of which still go on triggering more genes. While all the details aren't known about this complex process, identifying the master switch is a really good start. The goal is to eventually inhibit SOX4 and or one of its downstream products that is crucial to metastasis. 
Somewhat related medications are already in development, but it will take time for testing and refinement. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. The stories this week aren't really conductive to an audience question, so in the comments leave what you would ask the audience based on one of these stories, because we are lazy. Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.